the reason I wanted to talk to Adam today is because there, there's more recruiting news than anything else these days in the sport of college basketball. And what I want to do is start with Adam on what's happening at Missouri, where Dennis Gates uh, recently secured a commitment uh, from Honor Botang, a 6'5 wing from Little Rock, Arkansas, who is ranked 41st in the class of 2024. That addition means Mizzou, right now, in this moment, has the number one recruiting class in America, according to 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings. So let's start there, Adam. Does Mizzou really have the best class in 2024 at this moment? And either way, how impressed are you with what Dennis Gates is doing in advance of his uh, second season in the SEC? Yeah, I, I think they do because, you know, sometimes the, the class rankings are basically a mathematical equation that don't always take fit into consideration. But in this instance, fit is a factor for Mizzou as well. So Dennis Gates is, is really getting it going. He's selling the success uh, from last year in terms of sending two guys pro that were not necessarily on draft boards going into the season. And he's really selling this, this NBA style of play with positional versatility and, and really hanging his hat on player development. Now, obviously, um, NIL is the cloud that looms over every recruiting discussion these days. So I'm not even going to go there. But suffice it to say, we're just assuming it's competitive because nobody's going to get anything done these days if it's not. But beyond that, um, the player development, the track record that dates all the way back to Florida State of getting guys to the pros, that that's really resonating. and and he is resonating with with these kids who are, are just believing in his message of player development, positional versatility, and getting guys to the league. You've got four players in the class right now. It's Honor Botang, 6'5 wing. He's ranked 41st in the country. Then there's Peyton Marshall, a seven foot center, 57th in the country. Marcus Allen, 6'6 six, six wing, 63rd in the country. Uh, Teal Barrett, 6'4 point guard, 88th in the country. So that's four top. 90 guys in the country it's interesting because you know we're still in september of 2023 these are guys who will uh, play college basketball not this upcoming season but the next season i just sort of skimmed through most schools right now have like one commitment or two missouri has four let me ask you um Obviously, Dennis Gates has prioritized the high school ranks there's no way to get four commitments uh, before october 1st if you have it how much has you mentioned NIL and the one-time transfer waiver changed the way staffs are prioritizing high school basketball players? I know Missouri still is, but it seems like certainly the numbers have been shifted a little bit at most places. You know, I think the biggest change is in, in relation to the calendar. What we saw last year and what I expect to continue this year was a, a big emphasis on high school players throughout the course of the summer and heading into the early signing period, and then almost a ceasefire through the course of, of the college season and even the high school season. I've never seen less foot traffic uh, during the high school season in terms of college coaches on the road recruiting than I did last year. So I think, and this is, this is a generalization, obviously it doesn't apply to everyone, but I think for the most part, the strategy is to land players who who coaches believe can be immediate impact talent and to get them early, get them done by the early signing period, and then focus on their team and whatever additions they need after the course of the season to focus on the portal. What I will tell you, GP, is the schools that go into the fall saying, oh, we're going to get what we need in the portal. We've only got three. We're going to be able to get three guys in the portal. Um, they end up being behind the eight ball in the spring because inevitably they end up with six because three guys seem to leave every program. And it's really hard to get six good players in in the portal right now. Um, you mentioned Dennis Gates. Obviously, he has prospects believing in him. I think he's got Mizzou fans believing in him, just college basketball fans in general believing in him. He's really been terrific. And not just at Mizzou last season, even before that. You know, his past three years, which would include two at Cleveland State and one at Missouri, his past three years as a head coach, 64 and 29 overall. 42 and 17 in his league, two conference titles, two NCAA tournament appearances. Um, what's your um, experience like over the years with Dennis Gates? Was he somebody who, when you saw him working at the assistant coach level, you you could see what you thought you needed to see to to recognize this guy's going to be a a successful high major head coach someday. Well, I'll tell you a recent story. It was April of, of this past year, and, and I happened to sit next to him in an event, uh, recruiting event. And 
Um, admittedly, I didn't end up watching as much of the game as I should have because he and I just ended up ended up talking. And we were talking about players. We were actually talking about the NBA draft. I was doing some legwork, getting ready for, for our CBS uh, Sports HQ coverage of that. And talking to him about some of his guys, and as I mentioned, he he had he had a first round pick last year, and he had someone sign a, a two way deal. So he he had two pros out of that class, and we went back and forth for the better part of, of that hour, just showing me, you know, he he literally handed me his cell phone at one point, showing me how he does film sessions with his guys. He says, you know, we don't sit in the film room and watch film for an hour like most people do. He said. I text them clips throughout the night and I, I'm looking at the clips and I, I said to him, I was like, wait a minute, you're cutting these up yourself. This isn't some polished thing from, you know, this is you taking your cell phone, holding it up to the computer, hitting, hitting record and then text. And then I'm looking at the timestamp and it's like, you know, 1230 on a Saturday night, you know, and, and stuff like that. And it, it just speaks to, I thought, his ability to communicate with his players in the way in which they communicate with everybody else and, and really be be um, to evolve with the times. And I think the other important thing when it comes to his track record is is the the links to Florida State. And I'm talking about the Florida State kind of in their glory days, not Leonard Hamilton staff, because remember, he's got CY on staff with him now, too, who went from Florida State to join him in Mizzou, who was a powerhouse recruiter at Florida State. And they had a long list of guys they developed there. They recruited and developed from Jonathan Isaacs to Scotty Barnes and you know, these are lottery picks and real success stories in the NBA. Um, and, and so they can sell that now, too. So you, 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 you put all that together, all the stuff they have to sell, the recent history of success, the relatability, the way in which he communicates with his, you know, with his kids, the way in which that they, they talk and, and, um, and the way he's giving his kids information to process. I mean, I, I was really, I mean, it was literally a, a film session over text message. I mean, they're going back and forth um, just about like, you know, the angle of his feet or the the different, you know, different skill development points. I, I remember he gave me this, this little nugget. We were sitting there, we we're talking about some of the shooting progression that his guys made last year at Mizzou after he took, the, took over. And the teaching point there is we shoot strikes. And he said, and I said, okay, what's that mean? He says, if you get a good pass and it hits you in the strike zone, if it hits you in the shooting pocket, you have to shoot that ball if you're open. Otherwise, I'm taking you out. So it takes away all the insecurity out of it. And when players have not just that confidence, but that mandate of you must shoot this ball, you saw the shooting percentage just really jump up. And that paid off in the NBA stock of a couple of different guys in that Missouri squad last year. Last thing on this topic, obviously, Missouri has the number one recruiting class right now, according to the composite rankings, also according to you. Fine. When it's all over with and the class of 2024 is in the books, what school we have to do this for a dribble handoff tomorrow, CBS sports.com. I should probably ask you before I start submitting my answer, what school is going to end up with the number one recruiting class in America? I think it'll be Duke. Yeah. Um, Duke Duke's, you know, the perceived favorite for, for Cooper flag right now. They just got Con Canepo last week. So they've got they've got three commitments, um, including two five stars right now. But if you look at their roster this year and the types of losses they could have following the season, and I, I mean, I think it's a pretty good chance that the whole starting five is is out after this year at Duke. So they're going to need to still uh, be be recruiting at a really high level. And you look at the players they're still involved with from Cooper Flagg, uh, who's the number one prospect in the country, Patrick Nagumba, who's one of the best uh, big men in the country, VJ Edgecombe, who's a top 10 player in the class. So they've got a and, and Dylan Harper, of course, who, you know, we thought was was debating between them and Rutgers where his brother played, but now is going to be taking some more visits. So they've still got is as many five-star targets left on the board as anyone in the country and they have to land uh it i think at least two more of them so that would give them four five-star prospects and i think that would be good enough for the number one class in the country so adam finkelstein thinks duke will ultimately end up with the number one recruiting class in 2024 and there's a good chance whether they do that or not they could end up with the number one recruiting class in 2025 because that's a class that features cameron and caden boozer 